What's going on guys? It's Ricky with another video for you guys. Um, so today we're doing something a little bit different. I am getting back to my geek roots and I am building a new computer. Uh, some of the parts here are um, recycled from my uh, computer build that I had previously. Only a couple of them though. Um, so basically at its core this is a completely new computer. Um, new motherboard, CPU, RAM, power supply, even CPU cooler is new. Um, got the new updated um, H100i V2 in there. Uh, but what I'm reusing is I'm going to reuse my uh, G uh, GTX 970 because uh, it's still a great car, it still works for my gaming needs and uh, it does great for um, uh, GPU acceleration in Adobe Premiere which is what I use to edit all my videos. Uh, so it's still working great. Um, and I'm going to be reusing my uh, Samsung 840 EVO SSD because it's still great, very fast, works, um, no reason to get a new one. Um, and then uh, two hard drives that I had laying around my uh, Seagate one terabyte, and then I had another 500 gigabyte um, hard drive uh, for extra storage laying around as well. So I'm going to be using that again too. Um, so basically, what we're going to be doing here is I'm just going to be uh, building a new computer um, and showing you guys kind of my, my process and how I build it, um, and then I'll show you guys how it performs once I uh, get everything built. So check it out. All right, guys. So the first thing I always like to do when I uh, start a new computer build, make sure we open our new motherboard here. This is the MSI. Z170 ASLI Plus. Get this thing open and check what we got inside here. So we'll turn it this way. So, alright, so the reason I actually went with this motherboard, um, first it had all the features that I needed. Um, of course, it supports DDR4. It is a Z170 chipset, so it supports overclocking. Um, that's the reason why I got this guy here, um, the 6700K. Um, so I wanted to overclock that a little bit and have a motherboard that's capable of it. This isn't like the most extreme uh, motherboard for overclocking, but it is capable of it, and it has some great reviews on uh, its overclocking capabilities, so I decided to go with it. Um, has plenty of SATA ports for my, um, my hard drives. Uh, supports USB 3 obviously does have m.2 for when I want to uh, step it up and get one of those uh, for a boot drive or whatever I want to do with it um, it also comes with um, right here a USB type C port which is a future proofing thing right there I don't have anything that's uh, USB type C yet but that's the next generation um, pretty much fastest USB that, that's going to be out um, which is pretty awesome so when that d stuff does start becoming a little more mainstream I'll probably get something for that so it's good to have that there um, and then of course it has USB 3.1's, HDMI, uh, VGA, DVI um, of course these two ports here which I will never use obviously um, and then you know your LAN port and uh, your audio right here so and then it also supports um, SLI and Crossfire so don't have to worry about um, not being able to do that later on too. So and then from that point we can go ahead and continue with the rest of the build. So here we go. Alright guys we want to take our um, new i7-6700K out of the box and get that thing ready to throw it on the motherboard. So we're going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys how you're supposed to put that on. Alright guys so once you guys have your uh, processor out of the box you want to make sure you hold it just like this. Uh, don't touch the very top of it because you don't want to get to the, the oils from your skin on it. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and hold it from the side right there and you'll notice that on one of the corners here there's going to be a little triangle right there. And you're going to want to line that up with the triangle that's going to be on your motherboard behind you. So we'll lift this little latch up here, open this up and you'll see the triangle. It usually is on this corner here, um, but we'll see what it is on this motherboard because I haven't seen it yet. So let's go ahead and open this up. We'll tick mark right there on the edge. You get this corner here, the little triangle, lines right up with that guy down there. So pretty much you want to just make sure you drop her in. You literally should have to have no force at all, it should just drop in there. Did you hear the sound? It should sound like it's a little drop in, there should be no force, nothing. It should just go right in there. And then uh, you want to take your lash, put her back down like that. Make sure these guys get underneath here. You're going to need to do some force, and then the lid, you're going to hear a noise there, that's fine. The lid's going to pop off just like that, and there you go. You installed an Intel CPU, and you're good to keep going. Alright guys, 
guys, now that we have the CPU and the RAM installed, um, we're going to go ahead and start um, working in the case. Um, I don't recommend doing this um, to everybody. I recommend first doing a uh, test boot, uh, connecting your uh, power supply, your graphics card, and then um, your CPU cooler uh, just to test it, hook it up to a monitor, and turn it on, make sure everything works. Um, I can't do it right now because I don't have a stock Intel cooler. I've never had an Intel build before. So I'm just going to have to do it the old fashioned way and uh, throw it on the computer the best to build my ability and hopefully it boots on. So we'll pray that it works. So let's move on to the case. Alright guys, so the case we're going to be working in is the NZXT H440. It's an awesome case. I actually have been using it for a little while. Um, didn't want to get a new one. I've been, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and keep this one because it's awesome. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, great case, great looking, has all the features I need. Uh, so there's no reason to get a different one. So, uh, let's go ahead and prep the case uh, for what we need to do and uh, throw the IO shield in. That'll be the first thing we're gonna do. Gonna make sure we take this, and then uh, it's gonna go into uh, the back here. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Alright guys, so the next thing we're going to do um, is go ahead and place the motherboard inside of the case since we have our IO shield already in. Um, normally you'd have to go ahead and first uh, install your uh, motherboard standoffs, but mine are already installed for a regular ATX board and that's what I have still. Um, so I don't have to go ahead and do that, but uh, normally you guys would have to go ahead and do that, so do not, do not forget that step. That can cause your board to short out if you don't install those, so make sure you do that. Um, and then go ahead and uh, make sure your standoffs are in the exact correct positions so that way your screw holes will line up with your motherboard. Um, you won't get any shorts or anything like that. Um, and you guys should be okay. So uh, let's go ahead and install the motherboard real quick. Alright guys, now we got to the motherboard in the uh, in the case. Let's go ahead and unbox my shiny new power supply right here and uh, get that in the case too. Here we go. Alright guys, so something you're going to want to do before you install the whole thing is uh, to install the backplate of the uh, H100i V2, and that should be in your bag of goodies they give you right here. And Corsair did something really cool with this version, they just have these little guys right here, let's see if the camera can focus on it. Uh, all you do is slide it up and down, depending on the socket you have, um, and then that will fit right into these holes over here. Alright, and uh, I decided to pre-install the fans before I threw it in there because I'm sure you guys would not want to sit there and watch me uh, throwing some fans on there, so they're ready to go. And the next thing to do is just to uh, put the uh, new cooler in the case. Alright guys, 
right, so once you go ahead and uh, get the whole um, radiator and pump uh, put in, you're gonna go ahead and install the uh, the standoffs that go to the mounting bracket in the back. And I don't know if you can see that when I zoom in, it should be right there. There's four corners. One, two, three, four. You install all four of those, and then you can put the um, uh, the pump on top. Alright guys, so now that we got our uh, CPU cooler in, we're going to go ahead and just uh, install all of our hard drives. So we're going to start with our SSD right here, and then we're going to install both of our um, spinning hard drives. Alright guys, and now for everybody's favorite part, uh, connecting these uh, pesky front panel connectors. So, always consult your manual to uh, let you know where they're supposed to go, and then you can get them installed. Alright guys, now that we have all those random connectors all connected, um, last thing to do uh, is to go ahead and install your graphics card. So, got it right here, we'll go ahead and insert that in. Alright guys, and now that everything is installed, it's time for everybody's favorite part of uh, building a computer, and that's uh, cable management. We'll get all this mess. So we're going to try to see if we can fix this up as best I can, so here we go. Alright guys, so the rig's all finished up, um, did my best with cable management, I uh, didn't have to do too much because that case is actually really awesome for hiding cables um, underneath the shroud right here, which is a great thing I like about it because I absolutely hate dealing with cable management, so that's awesome. Um, so I haven't even tested it yet, you guys are going to see me do it in real time right now. Uh, haven't tried to turn it on or anything yet, um, so I'm not going to do any editing tricks or anything like that. I'm actually going to just flip the switches on right now and see if we screwed anything up. So here we go. There we go. We have power, guys. Wow, that looks awesome. All right, guys, so Windows is installed. Everything is looking good. Uh, no problems yet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and download all the drivers and everything that um, 
I need to get done. And something I was going to tell you guys, when you guys are doing this, it's a site that I recommend, and I know a lot of other uh, PC builders recommend. It's a site called Night Night. Uh, you can basically select all the apps that you want, like all the um, all of the uh, relevant apps that you like, and then you can uh, download them all at one time. So you don't have to keep going to everybody else's uh, websites over and over and over again. You can literally just do them all in one shot. So. If you guys uh, are building a new PC or you guys are going to end up building this exact one uh, with my part list, um, there you go. There's a little bit of uh, an easier route for you guys. Alright guys, so we are now in the BIOS right here. Everything seems to be running perfectly. Um, all the speeds are just as they should be. Actually, the DDR speed is a little bit lower than it actually should be, but that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll tweak with that and play with it. Um, but everything works. There's no, been no problems yet. Um, it's all of my drivers and everything like that, so everything is looking great. Um, so yeah, everything worked out for me, so uh, we will uh, cut to some vanity shots of the build. Here you go.